BBC journalist Tim Leach was allegedly threatened by the CIA over the 1994 UFO Zimbabwe Lady case. Tim Leach investigated that case with none other than Harvard psychologist John Mack. Let's dive in. If you're new to the channel, y'all, and you like content like this, please hit that subscribe button. I put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. I do not miss a day. And please hit that like button, veterans. That really helps out the videos. So thank y'all so much for the support there. And of course, comment down below. What do you think about this CIA threat? Pretty enticing. Let's go. All right. First, this was reported by Liberation Times. Okay, so I'm going to read the article here that this came from. Then we're going to take a look at three different clips. Um, we're going to learn a little bit more about the UFO landing case in Zimbabwe. We're going to hear from Tim Leach himself. Um, and then I've got a Danny Jones clip of them talking about Tim Leach that I found interesting. So anyway, let's go over the article that started all of this. Um, in fact... Here's a picture of the guy first before we get going, right? So we know who we're talking about. There he is. Now, this guy, it says BBC journalist Tim Leach, but there's more to this guy than just that. Wait till you hear. Pretty fascinating. Um, and yes, I'm still missing my tooth. So uh, that's still happening. Anyway, all right. Written by Christopher Sharp. BBC journalist Tim Leach was allegedly threatened by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, while reporting on a 1994 unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAP, landing case at a school in Rua, Zimbabwe. The case involved 62 students from Aerial School in Rua, who reported seeing a disc-shaped disc craft land in a field behind their playground on September 17, 1994. Some students even claimed that humanoid beings emerged from the craft. Following the incident, the BBC's correspondent in Zimbabwe, Tim Leach, visited the school to investigate the case. This is a photograph of one of the pictures drawn by a student who saw the craft and a being. So it's not, they're not saying it's a photograph, right? A photograph of the drawing. So again, and this is a child who drew this, okay? So... Be kind here. All right. After filming a report and sending the tape to London to be aired on the BBC, the tape went missing. That meant Leach had to file a separate report. Liberation Times can reveal that according to a source who wishes to stay anonymous, Leach confided that he had received threats from the CIA. Leach indicated that the CIA was interfering with his story. The source also provided Liberation Times with audio of a conversation with Leach from 1994 in which the journalists, sounding rattle, warned them to be very careful. Leach, a former head of the Foreign Correspondents Association, died in 2011. News regarding the CIA's alleged involvement in the Rua case comes months after the Daily Mail revealed allegations that the agency's Office of Global Access had conducted multiple retrieval missions of non-human craft. Three, sport, three sources who spoke to the Daily Mail on condition of anonymity, on an, of anonymity to avoid reprisals were all briefed by individuals involved in those alleged UFO retrieval missions. One source told the Daily Mail that the CIA has a system in place that can discern UFOs while they're still cloaked. And that if the non-human craft land, crash, or are brought down to Earth, special military units are sent to try to salvage the wreckage. Sources tell Liberation Times there is historical evidence that suggests certain elements in the U.S. government have been involved in nefarious activities to intimidate UAP witnesses. Recently, Lou Elizondo, the former director of the U.S. government's UAP program, known as the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, otherwise known as ATIP, stated it was recently revealed to him that there could be a personal threat against himself and several other whistleblowers 
formerly associated with the UAP effort inside the U.S. government. At a congressional public hearing in 2023, Representative Tim Burchett asked former senior intelligence officer and UAP whistleblower David Grush whether he had personal knowledge of being harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal extraterrestrial technology. Grush answered, yes, personally. Grush added that he had also directed individuals with knowledge of murders related to the UAP cover-up to the appropriate authorities. That's interesting. Now, this is such a small little thing. I don't know if it means anything, but it's just something that came to my mind. Um, in that, I made a video about Luis Elizondo and that threat that he received. Um, and one thing that I found interesting about it, of course, the threat is, you know, disturbing. Of course, there's, there's no question about that. But that he self-identifies as a whistleblower, Luis Elizondo. I, I don't know if I've heard that before. Lou Elizondo is a whistleblower. He sort of, in that, his own statement, he self-identifies as one. And that other whistleblowers, right? That, And I find that interesting because Danny Sheehan has stated in my interview with him that David Grush is not a whistleblower, right? And so he wouldn't think Lou Elizondo is a whistleblower either, right? Under the terms that, he, under the definition that Danny Sheehan gave, which I agreed with. Um, not that it matters what I think or my opinion or what I agree with, um, just by the law, what a whistleblower is. And that's, and Danny's a lawyer, right? So that's what he was saying, you know? Um, anyway, that's just interesting to me. I don't know, right? Is Lou Elizondo a whistleblower? I think having that title correct for some of these people is, we need to know that. Who's the real whistleblower or not? Right. Whose definition are we following? The law, as Danny Sheehan explains it, or just anyone with their own definition? That's what we go with. Right. Um, so I don't know. Anyway, regardless of this, that's not what this video is about. Um, Tim Leach, right, being threatened by the CIA. I tried to find that audio recording. I cannot. Um, that it mentions up here at the top of the... What does this say? The source provided Liberation Times with audio of a conversation with Leach from 1994. Cannot get that. So Leach indicated the CIA was interfering with the story, right? And there was more about the CIA, right? Retrieval missions, all of that. Pretty sure I made a video on that too. Um, I know I did. Yeah. Which is crazy, right? And this totally sounds like something the CIA would do let's be real but so you're asking yourself okay well who is okay this team leech guy the, the the you know he's getting threatened the tape goes missing that he makes clearly more information about aerial school um went out you know or zimbabwe right this zimbabwe case the aerial school in rua Right. Clearly, information about it went out and interviews with the students went out eventually. Um, but that is interesting. Right. There's a lot of people who want to come forward with information or just have information to get threatened this way. And this guy wasn't like trying to do anything out of the ordinary, just doing his job. How many other journalists have been threatened that don't say anything that that story doesn't get out? I mean, this is from 1994. Now, some people are saying, oh, this has already been out. I'd never heard of this until now, right? So look, what we're going to do right now is um, watch a little bit on the aerial school UFO landing, okay, that this is all about, supposedly, trying to cover up this case. So you may or may not have heard of it or seen about it, but this is old school footage brought to you by Eyes on Cinema, all right, um, so let's watch this video. Again, I got two more clips after this. Again, this is all about the aerial school UFO landing so we can just understand context-wise what this journalist was being threatened of. This story right here I'm about to share with you. We were playing down over there on the, um, on the log. 
Yeah. And then we saw something shiny, so we all ran down over there. And it was in the early morning? It was at break time. Yeah. And then we saw something shiny. And we saw two two people. They were in black, tight black suit. And they had big eyes. And a small we didn't actually see their nose, but it was quite small. And their mouth was quite small as well. One of them was running in slow motion up across the ship. And the other one was standing beside the ship. Yeah, you made a drawing, huh? It was it looked like this? No, yeah, something yeah. like that. I couldn't see the eyes or the nose or the mouth. It was just blank, like a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Well, when they came, I thought they were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> was this the first thing you thought? <laughs> I thought they were crazy just coming to our school just doing nothing. And all I saw was something like silver coming down, and I said, what must that be? And everybody's crowding it. I must go crowd too. And then I went and I started crowding and everybody... Uh, then more people came and more. And then I said, hey, I can't see anymore. Come on, somebody, I'm short. Come on. <clears throat> and then I went to the front and I started seeing more of them. And then I just ran away. Um, the day before the special came, my friends and I we were sitting um, in the playground and... Uh, one of my friends, her name is Emily, she looks up into the sky and she said, Oh, there's a UFO. She said, and I looked at it and she said, No, just kidding, it's an aeroplane. And we looked up and um, I thought to myself, That can't be an aeroplane because it was very shiny. It, was, it looked kind of like a cigarette, you know? It was a long thing and then on the end it was all shiny. And um, so I said, Maybe it is a UFO. So we were all kind of like getting scared now. And then... Um, the day that it happened, then we started thinking, yeah, there must have been a UFO in the sky. Because my brother also saw it, but he's left the school now. Mm -hmm. It was sort of like, sort of like a round shape, sort of like a plate, sort of like two plates that were sort of like on top of each other. <laughs> then there was sort of like the um, hole, the hatch for it, and there was sort of like in between two trees. But you couldn't see that clearly, and it was just silver all over. And it didn't, I didn't see any men or something. Like that. You saw one UFO that's surrounded by little ones? Yeah, one yeah, big one. One, one, one spaceship. One yeah. One little ones. Little ones around. Yeah, let me see. Let me see your drawing. One big one. One big ship and then small ones surrounding it with, um, with there were lights. Yeah. Surrounding the ship. Like uh, Sean's, huh? This is Sean's drawing. Yeah, yeah, and okay, one landed, the big one landed, and the and two aliens it, came out. Yes. And what well, happened with the little ones? The little, little ones, ones, they were just flowing around in the air. They didn't touch yeah, the they ground. Touch the ground. The air and and, and that, these made the silver lights? Yeah. Yeah, they were yeah. making different color lights, like yeah, green, like they'd red. Yeah, flash to green, blue. then they'd go to blue, blue and, and then green. Purple. green. Yeah, yeah, purple and um, red. But it was like it was going like each one to each one, but quickly. Yeah, like, yeah, like, 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 like you go, like they'll go there and then it'll vanish and then it'll go there and vanish and then vanish. Oh, really? But going quickly, like as if it was one ship moving. <laughs> yeah. Two places. Okay, uh, can this uh, drawing? So interesting. Hello. Come on. Were they yellow? No. I didn't have a silver crayon, um, <laughs> so I <laughs> did it yeah. yellow. Yeah. So, but, but what, what happened? You, you came home and you told your parents? Yes. yes. Some of them didn't believe it. <laughs> <coughs> my mom didn't believe me. Your mom didn't, didn't believe you? Yes. My, my mom's mom, my mom, mom. So she didn't believe me. Is that hard? Because if you see something and nobody believes you, yeah. what happens? Well, yeah, you, you feel start, sad. You, you, start start to, lost out. you talk yeah, to your friends that see You it. start to think as if it wasn't true. Yeah. And people... People say to you, no, it wasn't true, so you, th you think it wasn't true. Then you think that you're mad. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, you get all upset. Yeah, and everyone starts teasing. And my me. friends yeah, over the road, when I go there and I tell them about it, they just say, oh, he believes in aliens, oh, he's stupid. You've seen too many but, movies. Yeah. Was there nobody in your neighborhood who believed you? No, yeah, my, 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 my granny and my granddad believed. But my uncle didn't. <coughs> Where the spaceship had landed, all the the 
insects and ants and stuff like that were all dead and there was a huge black mark there. And uh, my mum said might have just been a it might have just been a fire there, but I don't think there was. I think it was the alien ship. Yeah. But, uh, have you have gone to the place, of course, and have you seen anything? No, we, we weren't allowed there. An evidence, I mean, that it was there? Um, no, some no. other people came to the school and they went out the boundary of the playground and they went to go and see what had happened there and they saw that the grass was burnt and all the living things had died there in that yeah. area. His, him and his parents and his brother and sister all believed me. And my mother just believed me, but my dad didn't believe anything I said. Anything. And did you describe it, uh, describe it to them? Exactly what happened? Yeah, and I drew it on a paper and I said, Daddy, this is what it looked like. And then he saw it well and he said, uh, Michael, I think you're telling the truth now. And then that's all he said of it, and that's all. Who was scared? Yes. Not all of you, huh? Who, who, who was dreaming about it since then? No. Yes, yes. yes. In, in, in a bad way? Bad way. Yeah, in a bad way? Yeah. No, let me tell me, you first in a bad way. Why? You have nightmares about it? Yes, I used to, but then after about a year, I stopped dreaming about it. Mm -hmm. I dreamt that um, the same one I saw, without hair, he came into my bedroom and he took me from my bed. Did you dream that? Yes. Yeah. And then I just screamed. I woke up and screamed. And what did your mom say? Well, she, she just kept on saying it was a nightmare. She didn't really believe me. I wasn't scared a bit. <laughs> no? Not at all? Nothing. It was all fun to yeah. me. Um, I heard this lady on TV. I think it was Jill Dark. And she said this lady got kidnapped and she had babies that were aliens. That's what you're afraid of? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think the aliens came because they're curious like us. And, um, well, they want to learn about us and we want to learn about them. Some people say that, um, people are saying that the aliens came to warn us when something's going to happen, that something bad is going to happen to the Earth. Yeah. I think they came here to um, try and warn us that the children Cause that because we're young, we've got a long time. We've got a long time till we die. Um, to warn us that in when we're older, there's, there's to something going to happen to the earth. Yeah, not to pollute because yeah. we're young, we can still prevent it. Yeah. Do you still have all that feeling that as a child you can do a lot? Um, yeah, yes. I, my, I have it. Yeah. Do you feel, as a child, do you feel privileged? Or do you think, next time if, if, if the UFO is coming, please go to another school? No, no, no I feel no, privileged. No, like you feel privileged that you I'm saw it? I'd love yeah. them to come yeah. back and you could see oh, them again. Really but only this things. time closer. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to say? The only exactly. thing I want to know, when are we going to be on TV? <laughs> <laughs> that kid, man. Right. You are on TV. We sent you the cassette. <laughs> Good way to end. What a great, um, right? Come on. What a great video. Um, again, if you haven't already, check out Eyes on Cinema. Um, I actually had never seen that video of Zimbabwe, um, the kids talking. I've seen a lot of videos about that case. Um, I never seen that. So that was really cool to watch that. And the kids were just so relaxed, right? And great job by the lady, the interviewer, to just let the kids talk, talk over each other. And just, you know, you get that raw emotion, that raw feeling, the raw answers. Great job. It's a great little, right? They're just sitting there, kneeling down, talking about it, very relaxed. I feel like you're going to get real responses from those children. And something clearly happened that they all witnessed. What that was, I don't know. But they all describe it so intensely. It's like, how could they all be just so confused on it being out of this world? Now, maybe the specifics about the UFO and the aliens hard to understand, right? Um, hard to believe which of their stories is the real one. But the fact that there was a UFO and some being stepped out, I'm, I'm, 
I, I got to admit, I'm, I lean pretty heavily on something happened like that that day, which is kind of crazy. But again, what exactly they saw is hard to determine based on they all have all these different answers, right? And it clearly isn't all of that. So, but they all know that a UFO and some beings stepped out, right? They're not confused on that. So I think that happened, just what are the details? And again, if you don't know, uh, there's a show on Encounters on Netflix where they covered this. And even more new information came out. I suggest you watch that episode, okay? Netflix, the show's called Encounters, produced by Steven Spielberg, Amblin Entertainment. Um, and particularly one of the teachers there at the school a few weeks later gets abducted, right? So teachers were saying they saw this too. Students, it, it's, a, it's a crazy story. And that story had never been out before. Now, this, you know, and that came out this past year. So... There's still more unfolding to this. They've done interviews with those with those uh, students as adults, right? So you can hear their testimony now and what they think. Um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. So, all right, let's go to this next clip. Let's get back to BBC journalist Tim Leach. So we've learned what exactly the case was about in Zimbabwe that Tim Leach was supposedly threatened over, right? We just heard from those students in Africa there, right, and what they saw, right? Well, now let's listen to a little bit more about who BBC journalist Tim Leach was. This is a clip from the Danny Jones podcast, Randall Nickerson talking about Tim Leach. You said Tim Leach was the BBC journalist. who was He was the first one to report on this case, right? Yes. Do you know what it was that drew him being a war reporter? What made him want to chase this story? He was already, he just got back from covering, um, I believe it was the atrocities that were going on in Zimbabwe. They were killing people and throwing them in mines because of the politics at the time. So he was coming back from that and he started hearing about these reports about the people seeing stuff in the sky, things in the sky that didn't make sense whatsoever. And then, so he was covering that and then Ariel happened. And he heard about that. Somebody called him. One of the parents actually did of the, one of the children. And he went and was the first one on the scene. Yeah. He called a UFO researcher because he's. Would love to know who that parent is of which student and talk to them. Was said he was out of his ball game. Mm -hmm. He had no idea what to do. <clears throat> he called Cynthia Hind and then Cynthia Hind recommended that he called Dr. John Mack because he was, you know, prominent and he was researching this, mm. these type of events. At that time, John, Dr. Mack was doing this, you know, seeing how widespread this phenomenon was outside of the United States. Because mm. for a long time, people think, oh, I thought it was just a U.S., you know, phenomenon. <laughs> right. You know. Um, and then he started traveling South America, Africa, and finding out the same things are happening all over the place. Mm. Now, did you sit down with Tim or did, was yeah. he, what did you, what sort of insight did you get from him by sitting down with him personally? <laughs> He's, he was so funny. Yeah. He seems like, like kind of a weirdo. He, oh, definitely. I mean, he was just like, he used to photograph, he used Goofy to be guy. the, the photo photographer for the Rolling Stones. Like he, his history is really interesting. So a movie should be done about that guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, he's he'd been shot. He lost. What? All, oh, yeah. What? Yeah. No, he was he was for real. Um, he just made me laugh all the time. Did this? I spent about a week with him. Did this case get him into the whole UFO thing, whole UFO world subject, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, it did. I, and it's you know, cost him. It really did. It cost him his job. What? At BBC. Yeah. Yeah. How so? Because they, well, from Tim's words, he's like, they don't want to, you know, they thought he was on wacky weed, you know, <laughs> that's what he says himself. You know, he's writing the editors of BBC like, hey, this is really happening down here. And they were, they just didn't want to talk about it. He, The way he put it, he's mm -hmm. like, you know, there's certain things you don't talk about. 
Mm-hmm. And one of and he learned that in war. Like you don't show really what happens in warfare. He w- he went on about you that. You mean like as far as like violence and gore? Yeah. Okay, right. Like what we just saw, you know, in Ukraine. That's what he's talking about. We saw some video recently, like everybody did, that was just horrific. But that's the stuff they were holding back for a long time that he was shooting, but they'd never play it on TV. Um and he was always upset. He's like, well, how, how do people don't even, people don't understand what war really is unless you really see how brutal and gruesome it, mm. it is. How are we going to sell it when people see how violent and deadly and devastating this is? Yeah. So the UFO thing was, it was a shock to him. He never stopped thinking about it. He died in 2011. Um, it was probably within a year when I interviewed him. No way. Yeah. Yeah, I really wish he got a chance to see this film. And what year did John Mack die again? 2004. 2004. So did you ever talk to him? Yes. I didn't interview him, but I did speak with him. Yep. What was that like? So there you learn a little bit more about, (coughs) pardon me, Tim Leach. um, Was a journalist for the Rolling Stones. Got shot. Right. Uh, He's also a musician. Um you know, war photographer covering this UFO landing in Zimbabwe, right? Because he's there in Zimbabwe covering political, you know, wars, right? And atrocities. Like, I mean, we're talking really in the shit, pardon my French, right? Like this dude, right? Um, Tim Leach, right? Um, The stuff that you know, some of the atrocities that happens in Africa is, 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 is fucking nuts beyond disturbing. Um, so remember this is in the nineties, right? It's a different time even now, right? To compared to now. So, you know, what really did happen? Because what's odd about this is it's not like the aerial school the sighting got, you know, covered up in a sense. Everyone talked about it. I mean, you just saw a local news channel put out, right, with all the kids, had full access to all the kids. For la- la- like, they were allowed to make drawings, the teacher, right? Like, all the parents are talking about it. I mean, that's how Tim Leach found out. it. So it's not like they were muzzling people, right? So... Why his story, right? Why did his tape go missing about that, right? Did he, when did he get there? Does that make sense? How how soon after the incident that Tim went to this school to film or take pictures or whatever it was that, right? Like how soon after? Because is it, did he capture something that, shouldn't have been captured or what is it that he just captured something and they're trying to cover that something up or they just that whole story as a whole so just the fact that he made a video or photos and they're like yeah right but did the cia threaten like that woman that interviewed all those kids on that video i showed y'all from eyes on cinema like did that woman get threatened by the cia Right, like, did John Mack get threatened by the CIA about this? Um, Because a lot of journalists covered this. Did they all get threatened by the CIA? Why Tim Leach in particular? According to this guy who interviewed him, Randall Nickerson, he's saying that the BBC thought he was nuts, right? Um, And I'm not saying this is it, but maybe they just got rid of the video because they were like, This is a crazy video. This is nuts. We can't use this. You know, that also happens. I'm not saying that's what happened, but that also happens. Um, Just any piece, right? You could turn something in. They're like, this is crap. Regardless if the story is good or not, the way you reported on it or or covered it, I just think of it as a report you turn in. Teacher could give you a bad grade or a good grade, right? It's the same thing. An editor or producer gets that piece of whatever you filmed and decides, yeah, this is good. Let's use it or let's use this or let's use that or this is all shit. 
or whatever, right? So that could have been the case. It could have been the contents of it. It could have been many things. Um, it could have been, hey, um, the, the BBC also got contacted by the CIA and then contacted the journalist, right? Um, because wouldn't they have to contact the BBC, someone else from the BBC as well, with power to make sure that tape goes missing? Or how does this tape go missing? And what does that mean? How exhaustive was the search for this tape? Does that make sense? It went missing. How? Okay, well, what did they do to look for it? Nothing or a lot and it's still missing? That That's a big difference, right? Um, either way, this is interesting, right? Um, that audio recording that they talked about, that I spoke about at the beginning, that would be interesting to hear. And to also hear from the parent that contacted Tim Leach. Which parent? Which school ch child? Were they in that video we saw? Was it one of their parents? I think that's important. What did this parent do? How did they know him? Right? Anyway, maybe I'm asking too many questions. All right, let's go to the last clip here. This is Mr. Tim Leach himself speaking. Now, uh, this video that, uh, again, link in the description. Go check it out. It has him, you know, performing with music and all this. But this is just a quick clip of him talking um, just randomly here. Okay, just so we can hear his voice, who he is, what he sounds like, that sort of thing. I never gave up my day job. My day job supported my guitar strings and um, my buying of guitars. And I just loved at the end of the day sitting down with my guitar and I got better and it seemed that people didn't mind me, me doing that in fact I was quite in, I was encouraged that they that they liked hearing my silly songs and um, over the years I got better at it and, and um, after a while it sort of became insistent that, okay. that, that I brought the guitar and and I was doing commentary through my through my songs on the political situation wherever we found ourselves. I look around I see nothing there worth living for What's the point of going on uphill It's all uphill Oh, listen to me, baby, baby, baby So, <clears throat> anyway, um, sounds pretty good. I'm going to put a link in the description. Go check out. He's got some music. Um, honestly, he sounded like a little, uh, like Oasis, right? It was like Noel Gallagher. That's pretty cool. I'm a huge Oasis fan. Um, right? A little bit of, I don't know. I Yeah, that sounded good to me. Anyway, interesting guy. Right. Interesting guy. And an interesting story. Right. Because we've got a BBC war photographer that then gets asked to cover this Zimbabwe incident, but not by the BBC. As we learned. This wasn't an official assignment. Right. This was a teacher or excuse me, the parent of a student from the Zimbabwe school, right, where this happens. And I'm assuming this, the child of this parent, said parent from the school, right, the aerial school, their child must have saw this, reported back to their parent, and their parent said, let me get this guy in. But how did they know Tim Leach, right? Again, this was not from the, an official assignment from the BBC, so Tim Leach covers this, right, and sends it in. And maybe that's why. It's not that it went missing. They just declined to air it. Again, what search was done to find it? How exhaustive. Um, and it sounds like he just sent in this unofficial report and like, hey, this thing. And granted, if you're a guy that's sending in stuff from wars, 
and all of a sudden you send this in, that might be a little like, whoa, dude, what's going on? What does this have to do with anything you're assigned to do that we pay you for, right? Or what? it's just a change. So I can understand, you know, and how persuasive were Tim's correspondence to BBC about this story, right? What sort of tone did he take with him? How did he try to sell this to them? Or did he just send it and they he thought they would just be amazed by this? We don't know any of this, right? There's a lot to imply here and speculate. But I think one thing to think about is this audio recording, right? Where he, he does feel scared and something is going on because you just saw him. This is just a dude who likes to play music. I mean, he got shot. He was a photographer for the Rolling Stones. He was in Zimbabwe, Africa, covering like gang, you know, whatever their war gang, you know, atrocities are and dropping people in mines and all kinds of crazy stuff. This guy's recording, right? Um, I don't know. He just doesn't seem like the type of guy to like make that up because it seems like he would just want to be chill with his life and play music and not have to worry about that. So why would he make that up? That would just add, right? That would get in the way of the music or whatever he's trying to do. So I don't know. I think some things did happen to him that scared him. Now, what those things are and what they mean and did they come from the CIA? Who knows? Something clearly probably happened to him that made him scared. You know? Um, I don't know. Look, I've laid out a few different videos and thoughts and ideas about this story and what potentially could have played out. But, you know... It's got everything you want in a story. BBC journalist and wartime photographer who got shot and ex-Rolling Stones photographer stumbles upon uh, while filming wartime atrocities in Zimbabwe, Africa, um, a the story of a school in Zimbabwe, Africa, that encounters a UFO and beings coming out in broad daylight to 60 plus students and teachers. Um, right. And then the CIA, uh, the story not getting out, you know, that guy passes away. Um, you know, been almost 15 years now. Who knows? I don't know. What does this mean? And the CIA's involvement in UFOs, right. And threats and, and maybe this is just a story about threats, right? That was the whole point of that Liberation Times article, potentially, right? This is just about threats. People who want to speak the truth being threatened. And I get it. It does happen. All right, guys. We'll see you in tomorrow's video. Uh, remember, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, every day's a gift, y'all.